to me and hold my breath. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in Jehovah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all of our affliction, that we may be able to comfort them that are in any affliction and through the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God, and such we are. For this cause the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we children of God, and it is not yet made manifest what we shall be. We know that if he shall be manifested, we shall be like him, for we shall see him even as he is. And there is comfort knowing that God overrules all for our good. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth, therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, for he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth, and his hands make the whole. He will deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he will redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. At destruction and dearth, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the, of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tent is in peace. Thou shalt visit thy foes and shalt miss nothing. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in full age, like as a shock of grain cometh in its season. For lo, this we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. And let us be comforted in that while life is frail, there is security in God. And thou turnest man no destruction and saith, Return ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, 
They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. The days of our years are three scores, years and ten. And even by reason of strength, four score years and groweth up. It is their pride, but labor and sorrow, for it is soon gone, and we fly away. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then they are that are of Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be abolished is death. Good morning and welcome to the homegoing celebration of our brother, brother Charles LaShawn Keller. Let's give God the praise for the life of this brother, brother Sean, LaShawn, Charles LaShawn Keller. We ask for your continued prayers with the family and we will follow the program as printed prayer by Reverend Ed London, Old Testament and New Testament, and then following that, a musical selection. <clears throat> Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, yeah. our hope for years to come, our shelter through the stormy blast, mm -hmm. and our eternal home. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come now for your presence at this hour. We come to honor and celebrate the life of our dear church family member and your faithful servant, Brother Charles LaShawn Kelly a loving husband and father, and son and brother. Like the Apostle Paul, he has fought the good fight. He has kept the faith. And he, he has finished his course on this side of Jordan. And now, Lord God, we pray for a crown of righteousness to be laid up on him. A crown of righteousness, Heavenly Father, which that righteous judge shall give all of us the day of his appearing. As we celebrate Brother Kelly's home going today, Heavenly Father, we pray for comfort and strength for his family, yeah. for his wife and his children and his mother and his, his siblings and all of his loved ones. We ask Heavenly Father that you would strengthen them now in this their time of bereavement knowing that their beloved brother, Brother Kelly's soul is now with you in heaven for eternity. For there's no more pain and no more suffering. But God Almighty, his soul is now at rest. It's at peace where there's no more pain and misery and strife and all that the earth would present to us in this our lives on this side of Jordan. We know that his soul is there where the wicked shall cease from troubling yeah. and the weary shall be at rest. So Heavenly Father, I pray now that you will lift up this family with your supernatural love and protection. Give them the strength to carry on throughout these days of their sadness and their grief. Bless them, Heavenly Father, with joy. Speak of a joy, the joy that comes in the morning, 
bless them, Lord God, with the faith and knowing that while Brother Kelly is absent from this body that's here before us, that his soul is present with you in heaven for eternity. Lord God, knowing this, may that peace which surpasses all understanding guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. He, the Lord, bless him. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, touch these souls that are here today. Strengthen them now, Lord God, knowing that all is well with Brother Kelly's soul. And likewise, all shall be well with them as they continue to trust in you with all their hearts. Lean them not into their own understanding, but in all their ways, acknowledging you and knowing that you shall direct their path. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture we found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Old Testament scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, yeah. and this, mor mor this mortal mortality must put on immortality. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus the Christ. May these words find comfort to the family. We will now have a musical selection.
Amen. But the people of God say amen. We will not ask at this time that you silently read the obituary. Amen. We will now have our acknowledgments by Willie Watkins Funeral Home, followed by words of comfort from Pastor Kenneth L. Alexander. Well, amen. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Amen. For this amazing life. Amen. First, give an honor to God, who is most certainly the head of my life, to uh, the overseer of this house, Reverend Dr. K.L. Alexander. Thank you so much for all of um, your help during this service, for the words of encouragement that you will bring um, following this. Thank you so much. And to all of our ministerial staff here, thank you all so very much on behalf of the family. To the family and friends who have gathered here today as well as on our live stream, on behalf of this immediate family, they would also like to say thank you. Thank you for your cards, your calls, your prayers, your visits on yesterday, your floral arrangements, but most importantly, your presence here today and this outpouring of love that you've given to this family, it means so much to them. But I pray that you would continue that. I pray that you would continue to call them, text them, just let them know that the same people that showed up today and over this past week are still gonna be the same people that continue to show up for them even after today, amen? Amen. Well, listen, on behalf of myself, my father, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, and the entire Willie A. Watkins Funeral Home family, we would just personally like to thank you for entrusting your precious husband into our care. And in doing so, we prepared this memorial plaque to keep and cherish his beautiful, beautiful memory until you meet him again. Now, Reverend Alexander, um, I wanted to sing one quick song before you got up. Is that going to be all right? That's going to be all right. Now, do you know Thank You by Walter Hawkins? Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy's down. People don't get enough pay. But as for me, Without homes are in the streets and the drug habit, some say that they just can't be mugs and robbers. 
personal place seems to be safer but you can have protection every step of the way and i want to say thank you lord for all you've done for it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes or just alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be and every day by your power you keep on you keep on keeping me and I want to say thank you Lord for all you've done for me hey, thank you Lord for all you've done for me Give God the praise. Listen, if God has blessed you to see the dawn of a brand new day, you've got something to thank Him for. To the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the chairman of our mother's board, chairman of our deacon's board, to our members and friends, of Antioch, to this Kelly family, Mother Kelly, God bless you, Mother Minifield, Lewis, to Natalie, his wife, Rochelle, Charlize, Christina, and the entire family. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Now how, how can I say that on a day like today amidst bereavement and grief. It is because we know that there is something beyond the grief, something beyond the bereavement and pain. We know that there's a better place than this. I say we know that there's a better place than this. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, and that is what Charles Kelly did, then we have come to celebrate the life of one who lived it well. I'm going to say that again. He lived it well. Charles loved the Lord. Charles loved the Lord. Charles loved the Lord. And he loved church. He loved hearing my father's sermons. And one, one Sunday he came up to speak and he spoke to my father, Dr. C.M. Alexander, and, and that's how we met. And he had my number, I had his number, and he would call from time to time. And, and his number is still in my phone. Uh, Natalie told me that he lost that phone and lost my number when he lost that phone, but I did not lose his number. And somebody ought to give God the praise because when you lost his number, he didn't lose your number. He knew the Lord. So this is not the end. The Holy Spirit gave me two scriptures to share with you today. The first is Ecclesiastes 9, 11. We find these words and I, I return and so under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. And the second is Matthew 24, 13, 
But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. If we marry those two scriptures together, we have what God speaks to us today, and that is the race is not given to the swift, but to them that endure. Charles was blessed with some of the best life has to offer. Listen, and if you know he was blessed and you are glad he was blessed, you ought to praise God right now. He was blessed big. He was blessed to be born in a big state. He was a big man, had a big heart. Most of all, he had, a, had and has a big God. He loved horses and he loved sports. He was blessed with a loving mother. I understand he excelled in football as a running back. And running backs are multi-talented. And some things that running backs must know how to do first is they have to know the plays when they are called. Then they must line up behind the quarterback according to the play. They must be ready for the quarterback to hand the ball off to them. Once they get the ball according to the play, they, they either run the ball straight up the middle or to the side, always looking for a hole in the defense to break through. The running backs are known to most likely receive a handoff. Good running backs have, have to know how to catch the ball because it might be a screen play. Somebody here knows football. Even by their name, they are known to run the ball, but running backs have to do something else. They have to be able to take a hit. The great and the goats, the greatest of all time running backs are known to play the game even with injuries. Uh, we can take football and compare it to life. In life, it's best to know the play before the quarterback says height. In order to know the play, you have to study the playbook. And the playbook is the Bible. You can't make it, listen, you can't make it just knowing one or two plays. Because life may call an audible on you. In life, we have to be ready for a handoff or a pass. We have to be ready to run the ball up the middle or to the side and look for an opening to break through the defense. But most of all, we have to be able to take a hit and still keep playing. Charles lived life the way a running back plays the game. He took the handoffs, caught the passes, found the openings, ran the ball, and took the hits. He took a hit when he was 21. He was shot in the head, and, and while he was still suffering and bleeding, he knew what play to run. He prayed to God and say it with confidence, God, if you're going to take me, take me. The life, the games could have been over, but grace threw a flag. Oh, you ought to praise him. Grace threw a flag on the play, and the bleeding stopped. God called an audible, pulled his player to the sideline to recover, and then put Charles back in the game. Some of us can testify that in life, we've had to take some brutal hits, some unfair hits, but praise God that grace throws a flag and you gain yardage and when you could have lost, God gives you the game. Some people, they, they see life as one game, but life is not just one game. Uh, if you let me continue with the comparison, there's a preseason. And then there's a season, and then if you do well, there's a postseason. Don't be too hard on me if I fumbled in one game. That's just one play in one game. Don't count me out if I have a losing record at the beginning of the season. On any given Sunday, it's been said that either team can win. 
But Charles could play his season because he knew more than just what was said about any given Sunday. Charles knew about early one Sunday morning. And that's why we could handle the games and the seasons in his life. He was blessed to run the race. Charles knew the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Yet not, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. He also knew that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Charles ran a good race. He found love. Listen, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like love when you're running a race and knowing you got somebody who loves you to help you run the race. He found love and found a wife, and Natalie said they met by accident. And I, I'm not going to give you all the details. But Matthew said, time and chance happeneth to them all. I don't think they met by accident. I just think God called an audible. They met at a business conference, and Charles had a bold personality and knew how to ask for what he wanted, and Charles knew the playbook. A lot of folk have forgotten the playbook. Charles knew the playbook, and there's an old play in there that Charles used. Charles knew the playbook, and he asked Natalie's father for a hand in marriage. That's an old play. Charles was blessed to gain a wife and a daughter, and then two more, Rochelle, Charlize, Charlize and Christina. Ecclesiastes 9.9 says in part, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life. Charles lived joyfully with Natalie and his daughters. He lived vicariously through his daughters because he was an athlete and he, he got a chance to see his daughters become athletes. And, and he watched them as they played soccer and basketball and performed gymnastics. And Rochelle even earned a scholarship in soccer. Charles was blessed enough to become that, that parent, that father who would yell and scream at the game and get kicked off the field. He watched Charlize and Christina play ball and become awesome athletes. Charles was blessed to live long enough, watch out, to go from playing on the fields where he played to sitting in the stands to watch his girls. He came to know life more as a race also. And somebody here may need to know that life is not a sprint, but life is a marathon. Sometimes in life we're running on flat land. And sometimes the hills get hard to climb. And uh, sometimes we run in the sunshine. And uh, sometimes we have to run in the rain. But no matter the weather, I encourage you today to run on and see what the end is going to be. Because something at the end is waiting for you and for me. Hebrews 12 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run, watch out, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let me remind us, some of us, of a story that happened a long time ago. 
Well, for some of us wasn't that long ago. There's a, there's a man by the name of Derek Ratman, a British track and field athlete. And uh, he has one of the most awesome stories in Olympic history. At the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, he pulled out of the opening round of the 400 meters 90 seconds before the heat because he had an injury. The injury was to his Achilles tendon. But before the 1992 Summer Olympics, he had undergone eight operations due to the injuries and was ready to run in the Olympics. Ratman was in good form by the time of the Barcelona Olympics. He posted the fastest time of the first round and went on to win his quarterfinal. In the semifinal, Redmond started well, but in the back, straight about 250 meters from the finish, his hamstring broke. And as I remember it, he was in the lead or on the way to win when his injury occurred. He fell to the ground in pain and agony. Some of you may remember it. There was no way he could win the race, but he forced himself to get back up and try to at least finish. The world watched him limping and hobbling down the track. He was struggling to finish the race. Then in the distance, you could see his father in the stands making his way through the railing. His father came out of the stands, climbed over the rail. Security tried to stop him, but he went around him, and no one could stop him, watch out, from getting to his son. His father made it to the track, and he made it to his son. Put his arm around his shoulder, lifted him up, and they crossed the finish line together. I talked to Natalie a few weeks ago, and she had the phone where Charles could hear. And she said, we've heard from the doctors, and they've done all they can do. Then she said, while Charles and I were listening, that they had prayed about it, and whatever God decided was all right. And I, I heard Charles utter what sounded like an amen. Charles knew the race is not given to the swift, but to them that endure. We get confused about who we really are. But we are not these vessels, these bodies that we're walking around in. We are living souls, and this world is not our home. Charles had endured, let's look at it, he had endured being shot. He had endured life storms, endured life's troubles, and endured the pain of cancer. And I like to believe that as he ran his race, there was a great cloud of witnesses watching him. But when his heavenly father saw him down on the field, suffering, trying to finish the race, he came down out of the stands, picked Charles up, put his arm around his shoulder, and helped Charles cross the finish line. That's what God has done for all of us. He has ensured that all that believe in his son, Jesus Christ, will finish the race. You may be injured, but keep running. You may be tired, but keep running. You may be bruised, but keep running. You may have to cry sometimes, but keep on running. Endure the pain. Endure the hardship. Endure the suffering. But right on and see what the end is going to be. God made sure that uh, we who believe would one day cross the finish line. And he made sure because one Friday, God sent his only begotten son down through 40 and two generations to a hill called Calvary. Jesus came out of the stands for you and for me to help us make it to the finish line. They nailed Jesus to an old rugged cross. He died.
for you and for me. Oh, but it wasn't just any given Sunday. But it was that Sunday after that brutal Friday. And it was early Sunday morning. Jesus got up with all power in his hands. That's why we celebrate today. Charles has finished this race. He has crossed the finish line. He doesn't get a medal. Ah, no. He gets a long white robe, white slippers, a crown. He doesn't get any new tennis shoes. He gets new slippers. And he gets two wings. He doesn't have to run anymore. Because right now, he's got two wings. No more pain. No more trouble. No more storm. No more trials. No more problems. Peace at last. Do you know Jesus? Have you tried it? Is he all right? He's all right. He's all right. Say yeah. Yes. Yes. If you're happy about Charles being blessed, give him the praise. If you're happy, it's still not over. Give him the praise. If you're happy that Charles is finished, and cross the finish line. Give God the praise. Let the church say amen. Let the people of God say amen again. We thank God for that those words of comfort, amen. Let's give God the praise. <laughs> Pastor Kenneth L. Alexander for those wonderful words of comfort to this family. Once again, please keep this family in your prayers. And the homegoing portion of this service has concluded and we will now have our committal and we ask that everyone stand except for the family at this time. My friends, whereas death hath once more invaded our ranks and removed from the walks of life, our beloved brother, our brother Charles Kelly, a soul departed to dwell in the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, it has become our sad duty to commit his body to the grave earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Now inspired privilege to commend his soul to our maker, father, and redeemer, and the confident hope of the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the body from the grave, and the joyous life reserved for the children of light in the realm of glory. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. And now unto our God and Father be glory forever and ever. May the people of God say, Amen. Amen. The service here ended. Please keep the family in your prayers. <laughs>